so today we will learn how to design a box culvert so these are the given data the inside dimension of the culvert is 3 meter cross 3 meter uh, that means if this is the culvert okay, so the inside dimension this is 3 meter and this is also 3 meter the culvert is subjected to a date load of 14 kilo newton per meter square and a live load of uh, your IRC class A a tracked vehicle okay so uh, in our problem we will assume this unit weight of soil is 18 kilo newton per meter cube angle of repose 30 degree blade of concrete m25 blade of steel fe 415 road width is given 7.5 meter and the span length is 3.3 meter that means this uh, width of the support this is given 300 mm okay so first thing is uh, while designing a box culvert uh, we have to consider here three types of loading condition three types of loading condition you have to consider number one live load dead load and the earth pressure and when the culvert is empty there is no water is flowing inside the culvert number two live load dead load and earth pressure which is acting from outside which is acting from outside and the culvert is full that means there will be a water pressure from inside and number three there will be live flow there will be dead load dead load acting on the top of the slab plus water pressure and there will be no lateral pressure due to live flow okay so one by one we will discuss so first come to this first case case 1 case 1 when so here we will consider the dead load and the live load heart pressure and the culvert is empty that means there is no water pressure so uh, if you draw the pressure distribution diagram so it will be like if this is the culvert so we will have this loading on the culvert
okay there will be there will be pressure from the base slab then here we will have earth pressure okay before that we have to calculate the intensity of live load on the slab okay what is the intensity of live load on the slab so suppose this is a tract a class a a tract vehicle this is the loading so to find the width of this question will be like this okay so let's put the four what is the we'll find this effective width of dispersion and effective length of dispersion okay so what is effective length of dispersion which is equal to as per IRC 21 this will be 3.6 plus 2 times 0.3 plus 0 0.08 okay As the thickness of the wall is 300 and uh, here we have uh, our uh, this wearing coat thickness is given wearing coat ATM thickness of wearing coat is 80 mm okay so this is as per IRC 21 So it will be how much? 4.36 meter. Which is which is greater than 3.3 meter. Our length is 3.3 meter. So we have to consider this effective length of dispersion as 3.3 meter okay now come to the effective width of dispersion effective width of dispersion for a single vehicle load for a single vehicle load so as per code b effective is equal to alpha a 1 minus a by l0 plus b1 okay so let's find out this alpha which depends upon the ratio this b by l0 which is equal to b is given 7.5 and l0 is given 3.3 so this ratio is coming 2.27 now referring this irc21 so what will be the value of alpha for 2.27 this is also 3 3 as per IRC 21 clause number 305.16.2 now what will be the value of A 
a value as per the code value of a is how much 3.3 by 2 and b1 b1 will be how much as per the code for this b1 this is the dimension of the tire contact area over the road surface perpendicular to the span this twice the thickness of wearing coat so for class a track vehicle this is 850 so 0.85 contact area perpendicular to the span plus two times thickness of wearing coat that is 80 mm so this is coming 1.01 .01 meter so what will be b effective now we can calculate alpha this is 3 into 3.3 by 2 1 minus 3.3 by 2 into l0 that is 3.3 plus b1 1.01 so now b50 we can calculate 85 mm meter Now, what will be the net width of dispersion? Net width of dispersion considering overlapping. Considering overlapping, it will be how much? So, here you can see there is uh, overlapping. Uh, so, what will be the net width of dispersion? So what we have calculated with the dispersion is 3.485. So this one will be 3.485 by 2 and this length will be 3.485 by 2. And from here middle of this to this class A track vehicle this is 2.05. We have calculated this in the previous video. So, what will be the net width of dispersion? That will be 3.485 by 2 plus 2.05 plus 3.485 by 2. So, this is coming how much? 5.535 meter. Okay, so this is the net width of dispersion considering overlapping. Now, we will calculate the intensity of live load on the slab. Intensity of live load on the slab. Uh, so, the load will be dispersed over which area? Uh, this is the net to width of dispersion and this is the effective length of dispersion okay uh, but actually this is the effective length of dispersion but we don't have this much of length okay to disperse the load so what is the calculated effective length of dispersion is 4.36 meter uh, so that uh, total loading uh, the total loading for class a tracked vehicle is how much 700 kilo newton this is for 4.35 meter of dispersive length okay uh, what will be for 3.3 meter so 4.35 meter loading is 700 kilometer but we don't have this much of length we have only 3.3 meter so what will be the uh, loading we have to consider so 700 divided by 4.35 into 3.3 so we will get 531 kilometer now we have to consider the considering the effect of impact effect of impact what is the impact factor 
what is the impact factor that we have to calculate so 531 sorry uh, this is as per your IRC 6 as per IRC 6 as per IRC 6 we can calculate this so you can see here our span length is less than 9 meter and track the vehicle so same for 25 5 meter linearly varying for 10 it is 10 percent for 9 meter 25 percent for 5 meter so you can linearly in interpolate so it will be 25 percent so let's calculate the loading with impact factor one point two five times five thirty one is equal to six sixty four kilometer now we can calculate the intensity of live load on the slab is equal to loading that is considering the effect of impact 664 divided by area over which this load is acting so uh, over which area this is the net width of the dispersion and 3.3 is the effective length of dispersion so 5.5 into 3.3 which is equal to 36.35 kilonewton per meter square this is the intensity of live load okay. so uh, what is the total load total load on the culvert will be 36.35 plus plus what is the given dead load there is a dead load given that is 14 kilo newton per meter so we will add that so total loading will be 50.35 kilo newton per meter square okay uh, now we have to add another that is the self weight of the slab what is the self width of the slab that we have to calculate so you need weight of concrete that is 25 into point is the thickness that is equal to 7.5 kilo newton per meter square 7.5 kilo newton per meter square so now after adding this what will be the total load on top of the slab is equal to 50.35 plus 7.5 kilo newton per meter square this is the so that will be 57.35 kilo newton per meter square this is the loading on the top and uh, there will be some upward pressure before that we have to find out the weight of the side wall so we have this is the top slab this is the bottom slab and we have two side walls okay so the loading on the top slab we have calculated 57.35 kilo newton per meter square sorry this will be 85 okay. so what will be the weight of weight of the side wall weight of the side wall that we have to calculate what is the weight of the side wall 25 unit weight of uh, reinforced concrete into 0.3 thickness into length is 
सो टोटल विल बी ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट सेवन फाइव किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर सो नेक्स्ट वील कैलकुलेट द ऑपर्ड प्रेशर एट द बॉटम वॉट इज द ऑपर्ड प्रेशर एट द बॉटम ऑफ स्लैब सो एट द बॉटम वील हैव द इफेक्ट ऑफ बोथ टॉप स्लैब एंड द साइड वाल ओके टू नंबर ऑफ साइड वाल एंड द टॉप स्लैब सो वट इज द टॉप स्लैब लोडिंग फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट एट फाइव इन टू लेंथ इज थ्री पॉइंट थ्री वन मीटर विथ प्लस दिस इज द टोटल लोडिंग ड्यू टू द टॉप स्लैब प्लस देर आर टू नंबर ऑफ साइड वर्ल्स सो टू इंटू ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट सेवन फाइव इंटू वन मीटर विथ सो दिस इज द लोडिंग ड्यू टू साइड वर्ल्ड डिवाइडेड बाय ओवर विच ओवर विच लेंथ ऑफ इट इज एक्टिंग दैट मीन्स द लेंथ ऑफ द बॉटम स्लैब दैट इज थ्री पॉइंट थ्री मीटर इंटू वन मीटर विथ सो वील गेट दिस ऑफवर्ड प्रेशर एट द बॉटम स्लैब दैट इज इक्वल टू सेवेंटी टू पॉइंट एट फाइव किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वेर दिस इज द बॉटम स्लैब लोडिंग नेक्स्ट वट इज दैर विल बी इलेक्ट्रल आर्ट प्रेशर ड्यू टू द सॉइल दैट विल कैलकुलेट इलेक्ट्रल आर्थ प्रेशर इलेक्ट्रल आर्थ प्रेशर ड्यू टू सॉइल विच इज इक्वल टू के इन टू गैच so k we can calculate this k how to calculate this k that is your coefficient of active earth pressure that is equal to 1 minus sin phi divided by 1 plus sin phi so phi in our case is given angle of repose 30 degree so 1 minus sin 30 divided by 1 plus sin 30 which is equal to 1 by 3 so this is 1 by 3 gamma Mid weight of soil is given eighteen kilo newton per meter cube into height is three point three. So this one you can get nineteen point eight kilo newton per meter square. This is the earth pressure. Now this is first loading. This is second loading. This is third loading. There is another. Uh, loading that is the lateral lateral loading or you can say the lateral pressure lateral pressure due to dead load and live load surcharge dead load and live load surcharge so how to calculate this that is k into q okay, what is q q is the total loading due to the dead load and Live load, surcharge weight. So K we already calculated. That is one by three into Q is how much? Q Q we have calculated this fifty point three five kilo newton per meter square. So fifty point three five. So multiplying this, you will get sixteen point seven eight kilo newton per meter square. This is the lateral pressure due to surcharge both dead load and live load okay now if we draw if we draw the pressure distribution so this is for case 1 so this is the top loading that is 57.85 kilo newton per meter square and upward pressure in the bottom slab We have calculated seventy-two point eight five kilo newton per meter square. Then there will be surcharge. This is the surcharge loading. Okay, 
that we have calculated how much 16.75 so this is this is how much 16.75 kilo newton per meter square so this will be from the outside and there will be a lateral earth pressure the distribution will be triangular and what is the intensity at the top it will be zero and at the bottom it is how much 19.8 so this is 19.8 kilo newton per meter square and this is how much 16.75 okay. so the total pressure here at the bottom is how much 36.7 so 36.7 58 kilo newton per meter square so this is the lateral pressure at the bottom that is 19.8 plus 16.75 which is equal to 36.58 kilo newton per meter square So all the loading we have calculated now moving to the next step next is calculation of bending moment calculation of bending moment so you can use this moment distribution method moment distribution method okay so if if you Okay, so we'll use this moment distribution method so what are the joints here let's say this is a this is b this is c this is d okay uh, so we'll consider one part here because this is the loading is symmetrical so we we'll consider two joints a and d so what are the members connected to this a let's say this is e and this is f it will be a m another will be a d so what are the members connected to d be D A and D F. Now, what is the stiffness? what is the stiffness so here it will be how much 4 ei by l by 2 
for this this is 4 e i by l for this 4 e i by l and for df this is 4 e i by l by 2 now what is sum of this k b for joint a this is 12 e i by l this is also 12 e i by l now what is the distribution factor that is equal to k by summation of k so for a e it will be 4 e i by l by 2 divided by 12 e i by l so you will get 2 by 3 for a d it will be 1 by 3 similarly this is 1 by 3 and this is 2 by 3 this is the distribution factor so next next we will calculate this fixed end moment mf a b then mf d c then mf a d and mf d a so mf a b what is the expression this is a uniformly distributed load so fixed end moment will be w x square by 2a and w will be how much at the top 57.85 length 3.3 divided by 2a so this is mean minus 52.5 kilometer meter mfdc mfdc will be plus w l square by 12 that is for dc dc means bottom slab loading is 72.85 so 72.85 into 3.3 square divided by 12 so it is coming 66.11 kilonewton meter next mfad mf ad will be mf ad mf ad means this one so this is the load this is a trapezoidal loading over ad there is a trapezoidal loading so how to calculate this moment so for trapezoidal loading this is the loading is like this okay so there will be moment here like this uh, let's say this is w1 this is w2 so we have calculated this w1 16.78 and w2 20 19.8 or that is equal to 20 kilo newton per meter square so we know that if this is the case so fixed end this is the case then what is the expression to find out the fixed end moment this is w l square by 30 and this is w l square by 20 so here uh, this triangular means w2 this will be w2 this will be w2 for our case so what will be mfad so mfad will be this is your a this is a and this this end is d okay so mfad for a will have this udl plus this so for this point this will be w l square by 12 due to this that means w 1 l square by 12 plus at this end this is w 2 l square by 30 for the bottom this will be same w 1 l square by 12 and for this part it will be w l square by 20 so w 2 l square by 20 so let's 
find the value mfad mfad will be w f square by 12 plus w f square by 30 and sorry w1 l square by 12 plus w2 l square by 30 and mfda will be minus w1 l square by 12 minus w2 l square by 20 not 30 this is 20 okay so just put the value of w1 is how much 16.78 and w2 is 19.8 or you can take 20 okay just to put in the expression and l is 3.3 .3, so you'll get mfad is equal to 22.5 kilo newton per meter and this will be minus 26.12 kilo newton meter okay. ah, now come to the moment distribution method so we'll draw the moment distribution table here So there are two joints D and A. So members are DC, DA, and here AD, AB. So what is the distribution factor? We have calculated for DC 2 by 3, this is 1 by 3, this is 1 by 3, this is 2 by 3. And the fixed end moment we have calculated for DC, this is 66 point. 1 1 and for this minus 26.12 for ad 22.5 and for this 26.12 sorry this is this is minus 52.5 now what is the balance moment what is the balance moment what is the balance moment balance moment will be this plus this into this so we can calculate 66.11 minus 26.12 into 2 by 3 so you will get here minus 76.66 and this one will be this plus this into 1.3 so you get minus 13.3 Similarly, this one will be 10 and this will be 20. Again, the carryover moment will calculate. Carryover moment, so for this it will be 0 and for this it will be 10 by 2, 5 and here minus 13.33 by 2 minus 6.66 for this it will be 0. Again, we will calculate the balance moment this plus this into 2 by 3 0 plus 5 into 2 by 3 minus 3.33 0, 0 plus 5 into 1 by 3 minus 1.6 minus 6.66 plus 0 into 1.3 that is 2.22 and this one 2.44 again carryover moment for this 0 this is 1.11 this is minus 0 0.83 and this is 0. The balance moment. This plus this into 2 by 3 that is minus 0 0.74 minus 2.37. This is 0 0.27. This is 0 0.35. Okay. There is a carryover moment. 0. 0.27 by 2 that is 0 0.138 this is minus 0 0.185 0 again the balance moment minus 0 0.092 minus 0 0.046 0 0.061 0 0.123 again the carryover moment 0 this will be 0 0.03 minus 0 0.023 and 0 again the balance moment minus 0 0.02 minus 0 0.01 0 0.007 0 0.015 again the carryover moment 
this is 0 this is 0 0.0071 by 2 0 0.0035 this is minus 0 0.005 and this is 0 again the balance moment minus 0 0.002 minus 0 0.001 this is 0 0.001 and this is 0 0.003 so we got this 0 0.002 we can stop here and add so after adding this for dc we will get this is the final end moment this is 35.27 this is minus 35.2 this is 27.36 and this is minus 27.37 so you can check this value will be equal to this and this value will be equal to this so this is correct now we will calculate the moment So let's draw. So we'll consider this one half only. Second half will be the same. So for one half. You can consider both the halves like this. So this is sixteen point seven eight. This is W one, this is W two, sixteen point seven eight, this is twenty. Okay, and here this loading, this is fifty seven point eight five, and this is seventy two point eight five kilo newton per meter square. Okay, so if to find out this moments. Let's consider if we take half, this is A, A, B, C, D. This is F. So for top slab, A, E. What is the free moment? What you can see the free bending moment at E. Free bending moment at E will be how much? WL square by 8. So W is 57.85, 3.3 square divided by 8 is equal to 78.74 kilo newton meter. So what is the net bending moment at E? We have to subtract the fixed end moment from here. So 78.74 minus the fixed end moment here we have calculated how much? This is? For AB or A, this is minus 27.37 and uh, this is plus 27.37, 36 or 37, same. And uh, for this, this is how much? Minus 35.2 and this moment is plus 35.2. Okay, similarly this side, it will be same. So it will be 78.74 that is the uh, free bending moment at E that is the maximum minus 27.37 this is the fixed end moment. 
so this one you can get 51.37 kilo newton meter so this is the maximum bending moment at the mid span so you have to consider this while considering while designing the top slab next for bottom slab this is top slab next come to the bottom slab that is df so what is the free bending moment at f same w will square by 8 so for the bottom case w is 72.85 kilo newton per meter square into 3.3 .3 square divided by 8 so here we will get 99.17 kilo newton meter okay now what is the net bending moment net bending moment at f we have to subtract the fixed end moment from this so 99.17 minus 35.2 this one which is equal to 63. Point nine kilo newton meter so this is the maximum bending moment at mid span that we will consider while designing the bottom slab okay now the side work that is ad now come to the side work that is ad slab what is the moment at the mid span this will be so this is a trapezoidal loading So for trapezoidal loading, uh, the maximum bending moment at the mid span, the expression is W1 L square by 8 plus W2 L square by 16. Where W1 for our case is 16.78, that is the UDL into 3.3 .3 square divided by 8 plus W2 is 20. 3.3 square divided by 16 so we will get 36.45 kilo newton meter so what is the net bending moment 36.45 sorry net bending moment here will be uh, this is the fixed end moment 35.2 and 27.37 so uh, the average will be this plus this by 2 minus thirty six point four five. so you get minus 5.17 kilometer meter this is for maximum side wall bending moment at the side one so if we draw if we draw the bending moment diagram it will be like this This is 
this is 35.2 this is also 35.2 and this value is 51.37 this value is 63.9 this value this value is 5.17 5.17 this is the final bending moment for case 1 loading okay uh, so this is for case a loading uh, while your culvert is empty there is no effect of water pressure from inside okay so for case 2 and case 3 